sunshine. excited to spend some time with you you know i follow and comment ah! <laughs> just love everything you post thank you. you thank you for taking the time today yes of course so what do we what are we going to focus on well i would like to hear kind of like five to ten things that you feel really have propelled you and your business i know okay. that a lot of people listening are primarily female there's some males in there too but okay um you're so strong with women empowerment and confidence yeah. in that. So I just really wanted to let you do the talking and okay. share those steps with us if you're good with that. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, let's go. <laughs> What's the first one? Okay, so I think, um, so, you know, I have like that conference every year that we talk about, you know, how to do business and branding and things like that, but actually dedicate the entire second day to personal growth. Um, cause I feel like the thing that held me back for the longest was caring what other people thought or caring what other people were going to say about me. So I think the first thing you have to do, even before you say, this is how I'm going to brand myself and this is my how, and this is my why. And all of those things is you have to just be good with yourself. Yeah. Um, be so strong and okay here and know who you are so much that if somebody talks about you behind your back or if people just lie or say other things that you just, you know, let it sort of brush off and that you don't really let that affect you as much. And I'm not saying don't let it affect you at all because obviously we're all human, right. but just know that that comes from a place of jealousy or that comes from that person's issues, not your issues. Because if you're doing good and if you're confident in your path and your purpose, then all of the, you know, talk just becomes white noise in the back. And so I think the first tip is to be good with yourself and let all of the chatter not really, you know, affect you deeply. How did, how did you get to that point though? Um, I'll tell you, um, I just came to the realization that the people that are, that I'm worried about what they're thinking about me don't care about my well-being. Yeah. They'd rather see me fail than succeed. So why do I care what they're saying? Yeah, well, it's very true. That's, that's hard to hear, though. But they'd rather see you fail than succeed. Wow. Yeah. True. So that's the first thing. I would say the second tip is to really, um, and things change. I'm not saying like you choose your, you know, mantra, or you choose your purpose, and you can't add to it, or you can't grow, or you can't change it. But I think is to have a clear understanding of kind of where you want to end up, or at least in the short term or moderate short term and long term, if you're, you know, that. I can think that forward. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you got to know kind of where you're going. Yeah. You know? So, and then every little micro step you take sort of is, is heading to that, that thing. So that's tip number two is kind of have an idea of where you're headed. And in order to have an idea, you need to set aside time to think yeah. and set aside time to maybe travel or set aside time to really like dig in. Um, you just can't be doing busy work all the time. How are you going to figure yourself out? So that's tip number two, Clarity. write these down and like not repeat. So we said step number one is be okay with yourself. Yeah. Step number two is know where you're headed. Was it hard for you to figure out where you wanted to be to get that clarity? Did it take travel? And No, I think that for me, um, and maybe this is the third thing, is know your unicorn. Like, everybody has a unicorn about them, right? So um, I'm one of 31 plastic surgeons just in this building, right? Not in Beverly Hills, in my building alone. Wow. So I think that my breast dogs are better than somebody else's breast dog. You know, mine might be a little smaller because that's my aesthetic, but I think they're all fantastic surgeons in this building. Right. So, but what I know I can do is communicate clearly. I'm good in front of a camera and I can affect the masses in that way by educating and by putting myself out there. And that's kind of my unicorn. Not a lot of doctors are comfortable in front of a camera or comfortable speaking about their, themselves um, and being open. So that's sort of my unicorn. So that's why I do a lot of TV and I do the social media because 
that's my talent above and beyond being a good plastic surgeon. So that's my unicorn and that's sort of my niche. So right. yeah, everything really enjoy it. whether you're a baker or you're a whatever, you know, you do, what makes you a little bit different? Mm-hmm. So I think looking at that is really a good way of setting yourself apart from the pack. So that's that. Um, it seems like you really enjoy it as well. It's your unicorn, yeah. but you have fun with it. And I do. It actually is another um, creative outlet for me. You know, I think people think, oh, surgery is so creative. And it is. Yeah. And, you know, a breast dog eventually after the, you know, thousandth one is a breast dog. So, <laughs> and it's nice to connect with people and it's nice to make a difference one person at a time always. Right. And I also, for me to feel fulfilled, I also need to be reaching more than one person at a time. To me, that's very gratifying. So that goes hand in hand with the social media and the television and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, I think that leads to another one is kind of what makes you happy or what, what do you define as success? Mm-hmm. And so that to me is growth, constant growth and not being... Um, I don't know, not just being stagnant. Like a lot of, a lot of doctors just take their boards, they graduate residency and they go in their office and they start just pumping out money. And to me, that's not growth. That would be stagnation. So to me, I always like, you know, now we have the skincare e-commerce site and we have, you know, the, sh- the TV show coming out and we have the Nazarian Institute, our conference every year. And so all of that stuff kind of keeps me thinking with all cylinders and it keeps me from getting bored. So I think know what makes you happy or what's your definition of success. Right. So can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. All right. So you're a mom, a wife, a surgeon, (laughs) all these businesses. Yeah. how, How do you keep everyone happy? How do you keep the family? How do you manage that time with all that? So like I, in residency, when we, you know, train in surgery, yeah. The dogma is to start operating at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. You're in the operating room. And to me, I had an aha moment about two, three years ago that I was like, wait, why can't I start my surgeries at 10? (laughs) I can actually like spend time in the morning with my kids, drop them off at school myself and then go to work and start seeing patients. You know what, what, but for the longest time, I just operated 7 a.m. because that's what everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. I think it's sort of like being flexible and really taking a step back and be like, what are my priorities? Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend time doing, could I spend more time in my office seeing more patients and making more money? I could, but then my kids would end up on crack. So it's like, you have to, (laughs) right. What makes you happy? And yeah, you have to also, you know, spend time with them because you can be the most successful physician, but be divorced and have your kids hate you. And that's not the definition of success for me. Yeah. So I just, you know, weekends I don't work. I'm with the family. Um, if the kids have a day off from school, I try to take the day off too. Like they have Veterans Day off coming up. But I just put two meetings in the morning so they'll come with me to the office. I arrange play dates for them so their friends will be with them. And then I'm going to go home and shoot some videos for my website, but they're going to have play dates at my house while I'm at home. But I'm also being productive. So it's kind of like a yeah. juggling yeah. act, but you have to – also, like, let's say your kid's struggling in math at school, you know, you have to maybe cut clinic short or at 3.30 a couple times a week so you can make sure your, your kid's going to catch up. Mm-hmm. So having that flexibility and um, you can sort of make your own schedule to match the needs at that moment for not just your patients, but also your family. Love that. Mm-hmm. Love that. Also have a great team around you. I think that's yeah. the thing. As you get more successful, you just hire really outstanding people to take care of anything you can delegate. So if it's anything that I don't have to do, I will delegate it. Oh, good. Did it take you a long time to get to that point? It took a couple of years. Um, I was really bad at it. I remember the first year of practice, I sort of, but that doesn't mean you should, I, I will, I will say with the caveat, you should know how to do everything yourself. Yeah. So nobody has you by the, you know what, yeah. so everything you have to know how to do yourself Right. Then you can delegate it to somebody else because if that person quits or if that person becomes indispensable to you, they have you by the, you know what? So right. you gotta, you gotta know how to do everything yourself first and then teach somebody else to do it how you like it and then let them go with it. Yep. I love that. Mm-hmm. Really important. Got some extra ones in there from you. Yeah. <laughs> 
those are your top four? I think those are my top four. I mean, let me think. I don't know. What about you? What have you, what have you found? It's kind of the same stuff as you, you know, um, mm-hmm. people always say, I work with a lot of salespeople and they yeah. think they have to make money before they can hire someone. And I'm always mm-hmm. like, oh, you need to hire someone to make money. It's too hard to do it in the opposite direction. So yeah. I, everything you're saying, I agree. I agree. My daughters are a little older than yours mm-hmm. and than your children. Mm-hmm. And it was a balancing act, but I think that's what's nice about careers is we can do that. And I love that yeah. you said, just because everybody else starts at 7 a.m., why do I have to start at 7 a.m.? Right. I just, that's so true. And I'm seeing more and more, we've been interviewing a lot of women and I love the authenticity mm-hmm. that you're just being yourself and you're not caring what others are saying. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And I think now, especially with social media, you find your tribe, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. like so much you know, oh, these are the people around me and I'm so entrenched. Like one day I went to um, lunch with an old friend and she's very educated, but she doesn't work, you know? So she sort of, like, you know, mom CEO. And she saw a lot of the moms from her school having lunch and they hadn't invited her, but she was at lunch with me, but she was just paralyzed by the fact that they hadn't invited her and she'd been excluded from that lunch. So I feel like without having you know, your job and your career and a path, those things affect you so deeply. Right. Me, I was like, who cares? Like, let them yeah. have, I can have the alone time involved in like every little thing, you know, but right. I think that when you don't have a vision and a goal, then that immediate community around you does become everything. Yeah. And your self-esteem, your everything depends on the group of people immediately around you. But when you're thinking bigger and you're thinking globally, Like there's so many cool people. There are. Yeah. um, That I don't know. They don't give you your your self-esteem is based off of what you're doing, not what other people think about you. Yep. So true. I agree with that. What about your conference? Tell me a little bit about that. What started? Yeah. Yeah. So it was actually like, I just noticed that for physicians, especially it was always kind of blind leading the blind. So I gave 20 talks last year on the business and social media of medicine. And I just thought, why am I giving these talks? Like there's people with millions of followers, like they should be giving the talks or there's now professors of social media. They should be giving the talks. (laughs) So, and then also whenever you, they give business talks at medical conferences, there's always somebody trying to sell you their software or they're trying to sell you something. So um, I basically said, you know what? We need to be bringing people outside of medicine and see what they're doing because everything's been done. It's just, we haven't applied it to this business. Right. And so I brought like an author, um, she wrote this amazing book called The Thief in Your Company, and it tells you how your employees can steal from you. She's a forensic accountant. So she oh. came down and gave us examples of things we can do, little teeny things to prevent against theft in our businesses. Or we brought um, the Western Regional Manager of Todd's, you know, the shoe brand, the luxury yeah. shoe brand, to talk about what is luxury and what is customer experience. And on that note, have you heard of the DeJulius Group in Ohio? No. They're like the Tony Robbins of customer experience. Okay. They're a huge firm. And so we had one of their speakers come out. He's coming back again this year and he's going to oh. talk about how to elevate the customer experience. And his background is 20 years in stadiums creating the fan experience. Oh, wow. And just taking like, you know, cool people and seeing and hearing their ideas and seeing how you can apply it in your own business. So really, I think anybody with a business could benefit from coming to the conference, yeah. but I think there's so many business conferences out there that we really, and also my following is a lot of medical people. Yeah. That's mostly medical people that come, but I love it when people outside of medicine come because they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, Christmas time, I like to send my top VIP, like 80 patients, this. And so I was like, oh my God, that's such a good idea. Okay, cool. We're going to send them like monogram robes. Yeah. To, all, to our top 80 or like whatever it is. So I, I think that mind meld and that, you know, kind of everybody talking and getting ideas out is really um, what a lot of businesses are missing because you can learn so much from outside your immediate um, industry, like, right? Industry. Yeah. Yeah. You do kind of get caught in that mode. This is how every, the 7 a.m. This is how every, yeah, exactly. Mold. Exactly. Um, what about a mentor? Have you ever had a mentor? 
I have. Um, I think mentorship is very organic. A lot of times, like you'll go someplace and they'll assign you a mentor. And I don't know if that always works. I guess sometimes it does. Yeah. But I think mentorship is a very organic thing. Like you have to make a connection with someone and they sort of take joy in taking you under their wing. So um, yeah, I've had mentors and I have had mentors in different you know, aspects of my life. But one thing I never had was a female mentor. Um, and cause all of the female physicians that were, you know, older than me when I was coming up were so manly to survive. I mean, they had to be like almost right. men, that there was no femininity. And I think that's why, again, my social media connects with a lot of people because they're like, wait, I'm a girl. Like I want to be girly, but I can also be a leader and I can be powerful, but I can also wear a gown and pink. You know? Exactly. I think that was something that was also lacking. So when I came out and I said, you know, the model surgeon and like, you can look good, you can have a family, you can have a successful career um, and still be authentic and feminine. I think that was kind of a newer concept. Yeah, I think so too. That's something I had always struggled with in my career is had a lot Mm -hmm. of wonderful male mentors, but it was really hard to find that female mentor. And so I appreciate what you're doing because you, you are probably a mentor to so many women that you don't even realize. Well, it's beautiful because they'll DM me and I get kind of emotional about it because they're, they'll be like, you know what? I won this award and it's for you, you know? Aww, yeah, it's very sweet. So you don't, and that's, that's the other thing I like to tell women is that, you know, you're not bragging on social media. You're not being narcissistic. Like how will people know that they can look up to someone if you don't put yourself out there or how will people know that you can help them? Right. If you don't tell them what you're good at. Exactly. Oh, so I think that's a way for women to sort of get over this whole like, oh, it's narcissistic. It's bragging. It's this. It's like, no, you're actually a mentor to people. Right. You're comfortable putting yourself out there. Like you're going to make a huge impact and a big difference. Yeah. And some of them, I think, often think they have to be better where they and. I that's why, that's why I'm saying in the conference, <laughs> yeah, no, in the conference, the second day, you know, is, is that personal growth. It's like, what's holding you back? You have all these tools you learned the first day, but right. you're not going to implement them when you go home. Why? Right. And a lot of times it's, I'm afraid of what people are going to say about me. What if it's not perfect? You know, what if, like, what if, what if, what if, right. And the second day, I think it's really important, especially for us, like highly successful business minded people to understand, you know, what's holding us back now. You have all these tools, but what's holding you back? Right. Um, What about growth? Do you look at each year and think, this is what I want to add this year? Do you look at numbers as well? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And I write it down. I have these, like, I'll show you. It's right next to me. So I have these, you know, little personalized things. And in the beginning of every year... I will actually create goals. So I actually write them down. So okay. I'll create social media goals. I'll create, um, for each different business, I'll create you know goals that I want to achieve by the end of the year. And I will take inventory every quarter. So this is inventory of where I want it to be on this little pink note. This is this week. I, I wrote it down. Of what was my goal in the beginning of the year? How far away am I from it? And what am I going to do in these last couple months to get there? Do you share it with your team? Yeah, I do with the appropriate like team. So I have like the social branding team. We have our practitioners. We have the front office staff. So I will meet with each different individual um, team separately at least once every three months. Usually it's monthly, but at least once every three months. And then um, we sort of go over the goals where we're at, what struggles are they having? What can we improve on? Things like that. So they get, you know, evaluations where they get to evaluate work and tell them where they think we're weak on, what went well, what isn't going well. And then we also give them feedback, like, this is what you're doing well, this is what you can improve on, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's important. I think Mm -hmm. they need to know the goals and also we all can improve, right? So Yeah, exactly. And I think they really appreciate that. I know I did when I was a resident. I hated going into a thing and, you know, somebody being like, well, we've heard that the general gist is... (laughs) Like, can I get an example of that? Right. But like, no. <laughs> so I think it's really like, how do you expect someone to grow and get better if you don't give them, you know, direct, 
you know, feedback with examples. Exactly. Yeah. What about plastic surgery being taboo? Nobody wants to talk about I had it done. Is that hard to continue to grow when nobody wants to really share that they had something done? Yeah, it's really hard. It is. It's really, really, really hard. Because I think also, I don't know if it's just in Beverly Hills, once somebody finds a good thing, they want to keep it to themselves. Like they don't want you overbooked where they can't get in. But I think that's why it's so important with like social media. I'm going direct to the consumer. Yeah. So I'm able to have a constant stream of consults coming in. Like yesterday we had six new consults booked. The day before it was eight new consults booked. It was really good. I mean, the goal is really two to four a day. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's going to get busier and busier. Um, <laughs> now looking into bringing on like other practitioners to work under me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So what about a book? Have you ever thought about writing a book? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're working on this new show that's going to air next year. So after that, I think that's when a book would be more appropriate. Yeah. And, um, I think I could do it now, but honestly, I'd probably even do like an ebook because it's just, things are changing so fast that I'd need to like add to it. <laughs> <laughs> edit every single week. Yeah, every, like, edit like weekly. <laughs> Tell me about the new show. What's the new show about? And when so it's basically like a woman's view of beauty and really being um, centered around self confidence and. Um, we've brought on people with really inspirational stories um, that were helping them profoundly, but very relatable stories. Uh, so you're going to cry in every episode, basically. So I'll have a box of tissues next to you. But then also we're you know talking about the new devices out on the market. We're talking about myths um, that you know maybe have been blown up on social media but aren't scientific. So it's a lot of education, fun tips and tricks, like what do I always have in my bag, anywhere from that to let's talk about, you know, neurotoxin and filler and what's the difference and, you know, wow. educating. So new technologies, inspirational stories, a lot of education um, coming from a woman's point of view. Oh, I love that. I feel like there is so much out there. You're never sure what you should do. What, what exactly. would help me? There's just so many choices now. So I... I think that will do really well for you. Yeah, I think it's going to be really, really good. Yeah. So what about, has there been a failure that you just were like, oh my gosh, you learned so much from it, but it really helped propel you? That we oh my do? gosh. I think, um, I mean, I think there hasn't been like one big failure, but there's like, for example, you know, I spent a lot of money taking my entire team to Texas so we can learn how to do um, bioidentical hormones you know, and then brought it back. There was a lot of issues because you're really controlling someone's bodily hormones. Um, and it helped a lot of people, but a lot of people were like, oh, I don't see a difference. So it was just sort of like, that was a learning experience to kind of stay in your lane and you don't have to be everything to everybody. It's just, so I, I did a big investment, a big money investment, sort of teaching my staff about that. And then we just decided to abandon it. And that's the other thing, just because you spend a lot of money learning about something or implementing something doesn't mean you can't just abandon it. Like, so we just let it go. Um, so I think there's little things like that. There haven't been any huge like failures, but I'm very risk averse physically. Like I won't go skiing. I won't go ice skating, but I'm not very risk averse business wise. Oh, I like to take risks. I like to um, try new things. But I don't know why physically I'm like, nope, no, thank you. Yeah. But when it comes to, you know, thinking outside the box and business, I love that. Yeah, I, I'm similar to that too, with not wanting to ski or do anything that could hurt you. Yes. Once I became a mom, like, yeah. no, nope, 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 not ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what about habits? Are you pretty systematic in your day I know you said you kind of have your morning routine where you take the children to school and stuff but are you yeah I think I am pretty systematic and I'm incredibly organized people are like how do you do all of this stuff I'm like I am freaking the most organized person on the face of the planet like and when I'm not organized like if my closet's a mess it drives me insane or my husband he's a brain surgeon so he's incredibly organized you know at work but at home, like my counter space is like in these nice silver trays and his is just like all over the place. So he does so much 
you know, stressful thinking at work that when he gets home, he just wants to relax. But for me, if my home isn't organized, it drives me nuts. And, you know, I just, I, I can almost like, it's not bright. I want my home to be bright. There can't be clutter, things like that. So he's, we're building out two operating rooms and he's moving into the space next door to me. And a lot of the stuff from his office right now is in our garage. It drives me nuts, but I know that that's just for another couple of months and right. they get organized again. But I love having, um, you know, teams come into my house and just organize the kids' crayons and do that like rainbow thing and, you know, just declutter our entire space. I have them come every six months and just sort of sweep through really? that organize everything the pantry the kitchen cabinets everything the garage everything i love coming home and like breathing and being like everything has a place um morning routine wise i usually wake up i'm on instagram for about half an hour uh get the kids ready get my get myself ready get, drop them off at school straight to coffee <laughs> okay. I'm a coffee coffee dinner person um i usually have like one one and a half meals a day i just run on on caffeine and love it um, and then it depends on the time. So as much as like, I'd love to be as organized with paperwork and, and, you know, my closet and things like that right now is a very busy season because everybody wants to get surgery or their procedures or lasers or peels, whatever it is that they're getting done. They want to do it now because they have time off from work or they have the Thanksgiving holiday coming up or Christmas. Right. So this is like a crazy busy time of year for us. I, so what I do is I just carry notepads in my bag and I just write down everything that needs to get done when I have the time to do it. So I'm incredibly like organized like that. When I ask a team member to perform a task, each team member has a tab where I write down that task I asked them to do so that a week later I can follow up and say, all right, let's run down your list. What have you gotten done? Wow. You are organized. I love it. I'm like insane. Organized. Does everything go on your calendar too? Yeah. So basically I have, you know, this calendar, I have my phone calendar and then I'll show you in the office. I like to combine all of the calendars, including my kid's calendar on this big guy. Right <laughs> so again, I mean, this kind of goes back to the question that you asked is how do you, you know, juggle everything. You have to be incredibly organized. I do have a personal assistant as well. So she will help do anything that, you know, I can, anything I can delegate, she does. So if the kids' school lunches will have to be changed, she does that. Driving them to and from their practice or tutoring or whatever it is, she does that. So it's all about hiring good, good people, good people that yeah. care and are dedicated to their jobs so that you can have time to think yeah. and operate and run the business. I love that. What about you? What about self-help for you? When do you do that? I see you work it out. When do you fit that in? I know. I haven't worked out in like three months because we've been filming for the show. So it's been so busy. Um, I do have to prioritize that again once we stop filming is I have to go back to the Pilates and the exercising. Um, you know, I'm never more than 10 feet away from neurotoxin or filler. So that's been a huge help to me. I have 20 lasers. I usually don't get the time to do it. And when I do do it, it's more because I want to do a Instagram post, not because I'm like, oh, I need to spruce myself up. You know, usually they're like, we have a good content. Get on the table. You're getting a facial today. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do love um, clothes. I do love shoes. I do love bags. I love traveling. So all these conferences I get to speak at um, is really fun. And, you know, when the show hits, we're going to be doing a lot of promoting, a lot of daytime TV, a lot of stuff like that. So that's just going to be super fun. Um, it's kind of like the first time in my life that I don't know what's about to happen. Yeah. The show hits. It's going to be like all these new experiences that I never have been able to study for, practice for. <laughs> so happy for you. That's yeah, good. it's going to be amazing. What month does it air? I don't know. You don't know yet? Okay. <laughs> It's all a surprise. Anywhere from like, I would say June to December. Okay. Wow. Yeah. When are you done filming? Next week. Next week. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it fit us in today's too. So thank you. So yeah. <laughs> no, no problem. Is there something I'm not asking you that you think I should be asking that you'd love to share? Oh my God. I think the one thing, if there's any younger girls listening is don't, let if family is important to you if having a family is important to you don't let your focus on your career get in the way of that 
that's the one thing I always tell my residents because I was so focused on my career. The one saving grace was I went to an Orthodox Jewish medical school. So everybody that was in my medical school already had like four kids. <laughs> it was really right on my radar. I was like, Oh my God, I'm behind, you know, whereas a lot of my colleagues in surgery, they were so focused on their career that they graduate. You're then you're 34 years old. Now it's about infertility and finding a mate and like all of the stuff. So I would say if you're that focused, the career is going to happen. Right. And the career is not going anywhere. Right. Make sure that your social life is on par with your uh, professional life because you're, when you're young, that's when you're fertile. That's right. when, you know, you it's have, easier. Just have the most energy, all of that stuff. Right. So just don't be so focused on career that you just, your life passes you by. Cause I've seen that happen to a lot of people. And honestly, like I'll tell you, if I was just a plastic surgeon with no family, I don't think people would look up to me the way they do. Right. I really don't. It's really the juggle of being able to do all of it and not really sacrificing one for the other. That's impressive. Yeah. So there's plenty of female plastic surgeons, most of which are moms, but I think the the superwoman aspect of it and aspirational aspect of it is not giving one up for the other. If that's something that's important to you for some people are like, I never want to have kids. I don't care about that. This does not apply to you. But if you do you have to make sure that you're putting as much energy into dating and going out and meeting people as you are into the library and the hospital, <laughs> all the other things that go along with making you really badass and good at what you work, your work is. Such good advice. I, totally believe that. I know when I was starting my career, that was something that was always in the back of my mind with the kids and will I be, will they be successful? And now they're both really successful and have businesses. And I've Amazing. said to them, do you wish I would have been home more? Or we would have had in there, like, we wouldn't be as successful as we are if we couldn't see you doing it. And so, right. and I know that, you know, some moms stay at home and their kids are super successful too, but it's yes. my girls. And so, yeah, I, that's actually been studied. Really? If that makes you feel better. <laughs> yeah, it does. Makes me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Good. That has yeah. been studied. Really? It has. Yeah. You can look that up. <laughs> okay. I'll look that up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's a busy season for you yes. and I'm so proud of you and happy Aww, for you. you too and I just you know I love you love you love you and so Aww, thank, thank you for you. taking the time today amazing thank you so much all right Dr. B all right talk soon okay bye bye